Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. We want to welcome your Sunday night, March 13th service. Let's open up the word of prayer. Father, we humble ourselves in your presence tonight. Lord, we, we might not be a big number or a great number in this room tonight, Lord, but number doesn't mean anything to you, Lord. You said in your word that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you are going to be in their midst, Lord. And that's what makes a difference. It's not, it's you who makes a difference, Lord. So you promised unto us to be in this place, to be in this room, Lord. And all, when you promise to be someplace, Lord, you, only, you always go to minister to the need of your people. You always know to comfort and to touch, Lord, and to heal, Lord, and to strengthen those who are in need, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord, because we know that you're going to do something tonight, not only inside of this service, in this room, Lord, in this building, Lord, but also inside of this building, Lord. We ask you for your blessing upon the live stream, Lord. Anyone that is watching, Lord, I ask you to minister to their need, Lord. I ask you to make yourself real unto them, Lord. Those that perhaps there's someone who is not living in a right relationship with you, Lord, they're not walking close to you. I ask you that you touch the heart and mind, Lord, that you help them to draw closer unto you, that they will understand and realize, Lord, how much you really love and you care for them, Lord, and they will surrender their life unto you, Lord. Father, once again, I thank you. Thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you want to. Thank you, Lord. For those who are here this morning, um, I was preaching on um, where do we find comfort? Let's be honest. The Christian life is not a walk, is not a walk in the park. The, the Christian life is not exempt from problems. Trial, tribulation, sorrow, pain. We all, from time to time, we go through this unpleasant circumstance. Where we go, where do we run? And when we find ourselves in the midst of uh, such unpleasant situation, in Second Corinthians chapter one, I want to read the, th the the verses again. Begin with verse three. Second Corinthians chapter one. Begin with verse three. Paul said this, Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort. I want you to notice something. In five verses, nine times, the word comfort is mentioned. So that tells you and I that the Holy Spirit, by repeating this word over and over again, is trying to emphasize a, a, a specific truth for you and I. So in verse 3, we read that God is a God of all comfort. Verse 4, who comfort us in all our tribulation. Remember, all. I might not be able to comfort you in some of the things that you are going through, but God can comfort you and I in all of our tribulation because God knows what you and I are going through. And God also knows the, the way to minister, the way to reach out and to comfort those who are going those, through those trials and tribulation with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Verse 5, For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so, so our consolation also abound through Christ. Verse 6, Now, if we are afflicted, it's for your comfort and for your salvation, which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it's for your consolation, for your comfort, and for your salvation. Verse 7. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partaker of the suffering, so also you are partaker of the consolation. So where do we run to find comfort? The Bible tells us that God the Father is our comfort. So the first place that we run when we need somebody to comfort us. Remember I said this morning that the, the word comfort, it comes from the Greek word parakletos, which means to come alongside someone else. And that's what God does. When we need comfort and we run to him, God comes alongside of us. He puts his arms around us, and he, and he dare to comfort us. He's there to 
sue our need to make us feel better in the situation and the pain that we are going through. So God the Father is source of comfort. The Holy Spirit is a source of comfort. Jesus is also a, a, a source of comfort. And also the scripture, our source of comfort. Now there's something else. The, the, the scripture, the Bible makes very clear. They're believers. You and I should be instrumental comfort to one another. And good or bad, we all attempt from time to time to help someone who is in distress. We, th we call them on the, you know, on the phone. Sometimes we cook for them and we bring meal to them because we know that they are going through our time and sometimes when you're going through our time, it's not, it's not easy to cook. So we prepare a meal and we send it to them. A lot of time we send flowers. We send cards. And we do so the little thing to try to show them that they are in our heart, that they are in our mind, that we are thinking about them. But a lot of time, even when we do all these things, which are good, sometimes we, we feel like we have not achieved our goal, our purpose. We fall short. Now, in verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, I think every Christian wants to comfort other believers. I know, they, I know, you, I know you're always going to find those Christians, they don't care. See, as long nothing is touching them personally, as long as they are not the one, they are going through sorrow and brokenness and pain and suffering, as long as it, 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 it does not involve them, it's okay. They don't care. If so and so is having our time because it's not touching them personally, and you they, you you see them in church, they come, they you know they 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 go through the motion, but ne they never get involved. They never say a nice word to someone else. They never reach out to let people understand. Hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you, and we demonstrate them with our action. But there is people who want to minister. They want the people that want to be used by God as an instrument of comfort. But a lot of time, we cannot do to the extent that we like to do for a simple reason, and it's found in verse 4. Now, look, look what Paul said. He said, God the Father comfort us in all our tribulation. Doesn't matter what you're going through. God has the way to comfort you to come alongside of you, to put his arms around you, and to make you feel that it's nearby, that it's close to you. Now look at this. That we might be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Paul give us a reason of it. Why a lot of time God allowed trial, tribulation, and pleasant circumstance to come in our life. See, anything that happened in your life, in my life, as a child of God, it does not happen by chance. It, it has a purpose. God is trying to accomplish something. So a lot of time, God allow this unpleasant situation in life, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, you know, depression, and, and so and so. God allowed those things so that he can come alongside of us and he can comfort us. He can minister our needs so that we can learn. And when someone else in the congregation, when another believer is going through the same thing that you are going through, you have learned the, uh, the way God ministered unto you, how to minister unto them. You understand 
Look what it said. See, God comforts us in all our tribulation so that we might be able to comfort, that we might be able to come alongside someone else, that we might be able to put our arms around someone else, and we might, to, we might be able to share with them how God comfort us. When we went through the same thing that they went through, see, God comforts you and I so that in return we can comfort someone else when they are going through the same situation that you and I went through and we felt the presence of Jesus, the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. I mentioned this morning about the book that Sister Mabel gave it to me. As I was reading the book, I could identify with a lot of the things that the person who wrote the book went through because I went through personally when my wife went to be with Jesus and she lost her husband. So all the feeling and all the emotion and all the doubt and all the question and everything she described in the book, I personally know because I personally experienced. So if, some, if I come across someone who lost a loved one, I know how to identify with them. I know what to do in a certain way, because I went through the same situation they went through, and the same thing perhaps to you. You know, you're going through a physical infirmity or some other issue, and then you, you know that someone is going through the same issue. You are going to be able to comfort them. Why? Because God ministered to you in your unpleasant situation. You learn from, the, from your experience how, what to do and how to share the love of God with those in need. Now, verse 6. Now, Sorry. So, that's one minute. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse six. Nevertheless, God who comfort the downcast. Now look at it. Nevertheless, God who comfort the downcast, comfort us by the coming of Titus. Paul said, you know, there was a time in my life when I was lonely. I was down. I need someone to be present with me. And I'm glad that Titus came and he comforted me. Look at verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. And not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you. Know that. He said, Titus was comforted by you. When Titus was in your presence, you comfort him. And then Titus came to me, and he ministered to my need, and he comforted me because he learned by, by the way you comfort him, by the way you picked him up, by the way you stood alongside of him. He learned what it means to be lonely. He learned what it means to be to go into a, a, a tough situation. So when he came to me, God used him. To comfort me. Do you understand? We're going through unpleasant situation. It's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not pleasant. It's hard to go through those things. But God comes alongside so we can learn how God ministered to us. And then in return we can minister to someone else who's going through the same situation. Now look, look in verse 5. Verse 5. Give me verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. For indeed we came, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. For as the suffering of Christ, note it, as the suffering of Christ, that's not a very popular subject. 
People like to hear that God wants to bless you, that God wants to prosper you, that God wants you to be the head and not the tail, that God wants you to be wealthy, that God wants you to reach. But let me tell you something. Like I said this morning, when we come to the scripture, we need a balanced approach. We cannot go to one extreme and we cannot go to the other extreme. Paul speaks about the suffering of Christ. And if you've been a Christian long enough, you know they're suffering a part of the Christian life. And Paul said, for as the suffering of Christ abound in us. Paul, he didn't have an easy life. He suffered for Jesus. If you read his resume in 2 Corinthians, he tells you, it gives you a list of all the hard times and all the problems and all the tough situations that he had to endure because of the testimony and because of love for Jesus. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound through Christ. See, the suffering of Christ abound in us so we, can, we learn how God comfort to us so that we can abound and we can minister to other believers who need comfort, who need consolation in their life as they go through need. See, God sometimes afflicted us because he wants us to learn so we can minister to other people, to other believers. See, God said, I'm going to use you. I want you, to, I want you to be able to minister to people within my body. You're going through a hard time. And the way I'm going to teach you but I'll let you personally experience what they will go through in your life so that you can learn and you can become a useful servant of mine. Fifteen years old, Douglas Maurer of Crib Weber, Missouri, has been feeling not too good for uh, several days. He had a fever. It was raging between 103 and 105. And he had like flu-like symptom. Finally, the mother decided to bring him to the hospital. They ran some tests and they came to the conclusion that he had leukemia. So the doctor told them in very frank terms about the leukemia and what to expect. He told them for, that for the next three years, he would have to go undergo chemotherapy. He will lose all his air. He will become bloated. So basically, he told them that for the, first, for the next three years, his life was not going to be very pleasant. When he heard this news, he became very discouraged, and he went into deep depression. His hand called a, fro a local floral, floral shop and ordered a bouquet of flour to be delivered to him. And she explained to the clerk that this flower was for her nephew who had leukemia. So the flower, the arrangement was made and the arrangement was delivered to the hospital. Douglas took the flower and he noted that there was a card. It was from her hand. So he took the card, opened it up, and he read. But then he noticed there, there was also another card. And he opened up the card and he read it. And the card said this, said, I took your order. I work at Bricks Florist. I had leukemia when I was seven years old. I am 22 years old now. Good luck. My heart goes out to you sincerely, Laura. Bradley. When he read the card, his face lit up, and he immediately 
breathed a sign of relief. See, just reading that someone had been in a situation and someone was able to come through, it gave him hope that he was going to be all right. I want you to think for a minute. He was in a hospital surrounded by the best doctors that were available, but the, the best nurses that could take care of him. But it was a little note. For someone else who went through the same situation that he was going through, that helped him, that gave him hope, that comforted him in the time of need. And that's what God wants to do sometimes. And I don't like it, to be honest. I don't like to go through the thing that I, I, went, you go, I went through in the past and perhaps I'm going through right now. But God sometimes allows those things so that he can comfort me. He can minister to me so that I can learn. And in return, I can comfort and minister to someone else that's going through the same situation, the same problem, the same oryx, the same brokenness that I went or I'm going through. In Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 3, look what we read. Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 3. Hebrew. For consider him, Jesus, who endures such hostility from sinner against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in our soul. Paul, the writer said, learn from Jesus. He went through the same thing you and I got through. He didn't have a rosy life. He was not spared from the trial life, but he went through. So learn from him. He made it through. He overcome. And he will minister to your need. For 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6. Now, if we are afflicted, if we are afflicted, I'm not saying that every day is going to be a bad day. I'm not saying that every day we're going to go to try and travel. No, 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 no. There's going to be time. There's going to be some good days. Some day when we are on mountaintop, we are not in the valley of despair, but we are on the mountaintop. We talk about when we go into those unpleasant times, unpleasant situations. Now, if we are afflicted, if we are afflicted, it's for your consolation and salvation. See the way Paul looks at life? If God puts me in an unpleasant situation, if God puts me in a place where I'm going to be afflicted, it's because of your consolation. It's so that I can learn and comfort you. I can learn and console you. It's for your consolation and for your salvation, which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or if we are comfort, it's for your cons consolation and salvation. If, we are com if someone comes alongside and, and puts his arms around us and show us love and show us compassion and he comforts us, we, we are going to learn and we are going to share the experience with you when you are in the same need. See, God has been, when, when we've gone through this thing, we learn how faithful God is. So when someone else goes through the same need, we can share with them how God was faithful to us and God who does not change, who has no favored children, but who treats everyone equally is going to be faithful to them. Now, let me give you a little warning. See, sometimes we as Christians, we lack manners. Sometimes when we, we heard that someone is going through our time, sometimes we become very judgmental. He, she deserved to go through like that because of the way they're living. That's, not your, that's none of your business. God didn't call you to be, to be judgment. God didn't call you to be a judge. God called you to come alongside of them and to comfort them. 
Oh, sometimes people go through a hard time, and then he said, oh, but you know, you have no idea what I went through in my life. They're not interested what you went through in your life. They're not interested, and they're looking for someone to be there for them, to act as an instrument that God can use to comfort them. You went through a time, good for you. You overcome, but just don't compare what you went through with something else, with, some, with, well, with what someone else is going through. Just let the Holy Spirit use you to be an instrument of comfort. The same way Paul learned because of what he went through to be an instrument of comfort. Let me tell you something. See, sometimes... We are afraid to get closer to people because we think we don't, have, we don't know what to say. And, and, and I, like I said this morning, when, when I lost my wife, in the beginning I had a very hard time. And I said this morning, I can count on the finger of my hand the people who really comfort me. The majority never heard, any, never called me, they never, they never did anything, but I can count on my finger who comfort me. And I think that a lot of time, maybe they didn't call, maybe they did not text me, maybe they did not come around my house because they feel they didn't know what to say. They didn't have the word to say. But let me tell you something. When Queen Victoria was, was queen, one day she heard this a common labor loved her baby. Now, Queen Victoria went through the same experience. She also lost a baby. So she knew what it felt like to lose a baby. So she decided that, we, that she was going to visit this common lady of her kingdom. So she made an appointment. She went over her house to just comfort the house. When the Visit was over. Someone asked the, the woman who loved the child, said, what did, what did the queen say? She didn't say one word. All she did was sit next to me. We held hands and we cried together. See, a lot of time, just by being there without, without saying one word, it will minister to the need or someone in trouble just by knowing that someone is there. He will help them. He will lift up their spirit. I'm not going through alone. There's someone who cared for me and took time out. Listen, it's going to cost you something if you want to be a comforter, if you want to be used by God. It's going to cost you time. It's going to sometimes cost you money because, you know, if you want to cook for someone, they're going to try the time. It's going to cost you money to buy the food and to cook and everything else, but it's worth it. If God puts in your heart and you feel drawn to minister to the need of those who are going through our time, God will reward you for that. Remember what Jesus said? Talking about the day of reward. When he said, you know, in that day, you know, people stand before me, and I said, hey, come into my kingdom, enter into my kingdom. Blessed are you, because I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And they will tell me, when did we do this? We never came, we never fed you. We never gave you something to drink. We never came to visit you in prison. And remember what Jesus said, when you have done to one of this little one, it's like you have done unto me. And you will now lose your reward. Just be there. You don't have to say anything. Just your presence sometime. Help those who are going through our time. Verse 7. Let me finish this up. Verse 7. And our hope for you is steadfast. See, Paul said, God placed me in a tough situation. So that I can, so that he can minister to me. So that I can learn from the way he ministered to me. I can minister to you when you are going through the same situation. 
And the reason there, God wants me to learn so that I can minister you so that you become steadfast. So that you don't give up. You don't quit. You don't raise the white flag. And you walk back. And our hope for you is steadfast. Because we know that as you are partaker of the suffering, you're also a partaker of the consolation. Consolation. See, we got to believe that the same way we made it, they are going to make it too. And with my presence, with, my, with, with your presence, we, with our comfort, with your comfort, they are going to make it. Somebody said Christian, Christian are the only people who kill their wounded. Think about this. When you find somebody wounded, what do you, what do, you do? You will help them. You bandage their wound. You take them to the emergency room. You take them to the doctor. But what do we do as Christians? We see somebody down, we step on it. Oh, you deserve what you're going through. You must have done something. Remember Job, huh? Job lost everything. And he had no clue what all those bad things was happening to him. And then he comes his friend, uh-huh, the comforter. <laughs> who, who needs this kind of comforter? And they sat next to him. First, I didn't say one word. And then when they opened their mouth, they said, Job, you must have done something wrong. God has made at you. That's why you lost all your wealth. That's why you lost all your children. That's why you, you lost your, your, your health. And look, look at your miserable job. You're sitting among the ashes and you're scraping yourself. So instead to pick him up, instead to comfort him, instead to lift up the spirit, they're trying to tell him that he has done something wrong. But Job knew, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Be, let's not be judgmental. They don't need me and you to pull them. They're already down. I need someone to extend a loving hand. And he said, grab my hand. Get up. I help you to get through. I help you to overcome. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. With God's help, we're going to make it. Now, let me finish. Colossians chapter 4, verse 10. Colossians. Look what Paul, as Paul speaks. Colossians chapter 4, verse 10. He gives us a list of people who comfort to him. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greet you. And Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you receive instruction, if he come to you, welcome you. Verse 11. And Jesus, who is called Justus, these are my only, listen, these are my only fellow worker for the kingdom of God, what are the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Listen to me, when you comfort to someone else, they will, they will never forget that you stood with them in the midst of the trial and tribulation. They knew, they, they will never forget that you took time out to be with them, to encourage them. And that's what Paul said. He mentioned them saying, they have proven to be a comfort to me. They prove it. Let's prove it to one another, you know, and let's be a comfort to one another. So where do we go when we need comfort? God the Father will comfort you. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. Jesus will comfort you. Scripture, the Word of God will comfort you, but also other believers will come alongside of you and they will be there with you 
as you're going through what you're going through. We're not alone. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And then he placed us within the body of Christ. And we have a place in the body of Christ. We have something that God has given us to do. Remember, the scripture describes the body, of, I mean, uh, the church as the body. Head, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, you know, and everything else. Every, every organ in our body had a different purpose. The same thing with the body of Christ. You have a purpose. I have a purpose. So, so as a purpose, we all have a purpose. And as we work together, we fulfill God's purpose for his church. For his church. You know, when someone does not do what God called them to do, the body will not work properly. I will never forget. One time I went to the hospital to visit someone. The sister used to come to church, and she asked me, can you go visit my dad? He's in St. Joseph Hospital in Patterson. So I went to visit him. And when I, when I walked in the room, he was missing the spot. He, he was missing the forearm and the hands. And he was sitting in bed, and he had boogers coming out of his nose. And he, he, was, trying to, he was trying to clear the boogers from him, you know, but he couldn't because he had no arm. And he had no hands. So I, you know, I clean it for him. I'm used to. But see, when when a, when a parts when someone when a member of the body of Christ does not do what God has called them to do, the body cannot work properly, cannot function properly, affect one another, and affect our minister. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are the God of all comfort. You know how to minister to every human need. I don't. A lot of people in this room, they don't. Because we did not experience everything in this life. But you know everything. And you can comfort those in need. You can comfort the downcasted. So God, I pray that as we surrender our love, ourselves to you and as we learn or now you minister to us, we will be able to minister to someone else in need. See, our people tonight, they are not here. Sister Rachel, her son is sick. Sister Rachel's son is sick. That's why she's not here tonight. Let's pray for her. Let's pray for her, her son healing. And as we worship the Lord, pray that we pray that Jesus will step in the house and put his arms around them and comfort them. Something with my mind. Anyone else? Who, God knows who they are. God knows where they are. God knows what they need. Are you feel tonight as we worship the Lord and you need comfort? Like I said this morning, listen, when I lost my wife, I said this morning, especially in the beginning was hard. What I did, I, you know, I just come here. I sat in the pews. Sometimes I didn't even say a word. I just sat up there. And allow God to come and to put his arms around me. The same thing you hear, you're broken because of what you're going through. Let Jesus comfort you. Open your heart. Feel the love of Jesus. The strength of Jesus. The help of Jesus. Next to you. And he will minister to you. We can come alongside you comfort you if you want us to. We will do that. We will always do that. But God is a God of all comfort. The Holy Spirit is a comfort. Jesus loves to comfort people. So let's worship the Lord. Let's the Lord work in our life tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
this place all to Jesus. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. And I will live love and trust Him in His presence daily. Live all to Jesus. And oh, to Jesus.
just want you, nothing else.